What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the bench. And today is the day that we take our AR-47 out for a test shoot. First thing we got to do is we're going to throw an optic on top of this. Now, I'm doing a, this is a double part series. So we're going to take this out for a shoot. The next video that's going to follow is also going to be a review on the Vortex Crossfire 2 rifle scope. This is a three to nine magnification by 40. And I'm um, make sure to check that video out too so you can see if you're in the market for a rifle scope, this may be the one that you're looking to get. Pretty affordable, around the $120, $130 price range. And so far, just what I've done with the basic reviews already, it's pretty good. I've also made a couple modifications and changes to the rifle since you saw it last i changed out my green ag43 grip for my black ag43 grip i just swapped that out from my other rifle so the other one got the green and i put the black on here i think it looks a little bit better like this than the green i don't have to worry about it matching it's kind of like a nice even two-tone finish <laughs> the one thing that i'm also thinking about doing and we're gonna do this just after we do the shoot to make sure that it works. I don't wanna go through all the trouble and then have to switch everything out again, is I may go to a fixed stock for this, right? How we have the six position adjustable stock, which I like, but I might like having a fixed stock on this. I don't know, I'd like to hear your guys' opinions on that. Leave it in the comments below if you think I should go with the uh, adjustable or the fixed. My primary use for this is gonna be, you know, longer range shooting. So not really anything inside of 50 yards. It's gonna be kind of my 50 and out rifle. And I think with this stock, I'm gonna get a little bit better accuracy than I would with an adjustable stock. So let's go on to mounting the optic. Yeah, let's take out our magazine. Magazine's empty. Rifle is empty. Okay. Now, unlike other optics, this mounts with a half inch socket screw or a half inch uh, socket. So, pretty easy. They're not quick release. They Once they're on, they're on. And we're going to put this. I think it goes yes this is my position right here now if you've never set up an optic before what you want to do is place it on your rail you don't you can hand tighten it down you don't want to have it um, super loose so it falls off just hand tighten it down you're going to take the scope covers off so you can see through it and you're gonna raise the rifle Put it up against your body like you would normally go into the, the standing shooting position. Apply your cheek weld. Make sure that your eyes are closed. Open up your eyes. If you open up your eyes and you see a clear picture all the way through the scope, no black rings, no haze, you're in a good position. If you see that black scope or that black ring around the reticle, move it back and forward until you are able to Cheek weld the rifle, open up your eyes and see a perfect clear picture. That's how you know that your optic is properly installed on your top rail to your eyesight. Also, the other no-no is you never, this, this mount always mounts on the upper part of your receiver here. You never mount onto your rails you just don't do it okay so we've got this on we've got this finger tight so the standard for mounting your base nuts onto a picatinny rail or your upper receiver ranges anywhere from 40 to 70 inch pounds now the only way to truly know what your 
mount is rated for is to check the instructions. And you can see right here on our berths, recommended torque for the base nuts is 65 inch pounds. The ring tops are 20 inch pounds. So the ring tops here were already torqued to 20 inch pounds. So we're gonna torque this to 65 and we're gonna use our Wheeler fat wrench. The great thing about this is it can use sockets. So we add in our adapter, which came with our wheeler. We're gonna put our socket in. The one thing you don't wanna do is go straight to 65, okay? You wanna work your way up in increments. So we're gonna start at, we'll start at 30. And we'll tighten this down. Okay. All right, so we're tight at 30. Then we're gonna go up to 45. And then finally, we're gonna finish at 65. Okay, so we took it up to the manufacturer's specifications to 65 inch pounds. Now this is properly torqued onto our top rail. We're good to go. So let's t finally, let's take this guy out to the range and fingers crossed, everything looks good. I'll meet you out there. So guys, if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, Take a minute, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, so you are alerted every time I download new content. What's going on guys? Here we are at the range. We are gonna test out our AR-47. Put some rounds down range with this, see how it performs. I'm also gonna be sighting in my Vortex Crossfire 2 scope. So we're gonna be doing a, a video on that coming up shortly, so make sure you uh, like, favorite, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when we upload this video. I'm excited to get this going, so uh, let's throw some downrange and see how she does. So today we're gonna be shooting Wolf 123 grain steel case ammo, nothing special. got a little kick to it so yeah I mean it's gonna take some getting used to I think I'm probably gonna change this out for the um, fixed stock just initial impressions because it's I've got a little bit a little bit of bump for that six position so I'm gonna try to zero this guy in using our Wheeler Engineering, of course. Laser bore sighter. And let's see how many rounds it's going to take me to sight this in. Okay, so we're going to check the target here for the AR-47. We had, out of 12, I had one light primer strike out of 12. Now I did not change the firing pin in it yet. I rechambered that round and it shot off fine. So we're going to keep going, see if we get any more. If we do get any more, we're going to change out the uh, firing pin, see if we can't fix that. This was our first three shots, our second three, our third three, our fourth three, and our fifth three right here. So we were able to progress up, move in nicely. We got a nice group again, we're using Wolf ammo, and I'm still getting used to the gun, so 
there's a couple wayward shots like this guy here and this is a horrible group uh, but I was able to kind of tighten it as we got in closer so other than the light primer strike that we had out of our I guess we did 15 shots not 12 one of 15 everything else worked fine we were able to rechamber that round like I said it shot fine um, I'm just going to keep my eye on it in case it's something that I'm going to need to adjust and change with the, the enhanced firing pin Okay, so both at 100 and 200, we were able to hit it with our zero set at 50 yards, which was really, we were setting up for 25, no problems. We had one light strike out of, we went through 23 rounds, so I'm just going to chalk that up as, you know, an anomaly at this point, unless I see more of the trend. So overall, I am happy with the way that this build turned out. It is a beast. It is a, it's a lot going on. So I'm definitely going to be changing this stock out so I can be more precise. I'm losing a little bit of accuracy with this uh, six position stock. So that's definitely something that we're going to do. So let's head on back to the bench and wrap it up. Welcome back to the bench, guys. And we are going to wrap up this build of the AR-47. It shot great. We had one light primer strike out of the uh, 23 shots that we put through this. I consider that a win. The one thing I will say about this is it is a beast. This is not your standard 223556 AR that you are accustomed to shooting. It has a, a violent recoil to this. It's not like it's not manageable. Even with the 9x scope scoped in at 50 yards, I was still able to maintain a sight picture on target throughout the recoil. I guess for me, it's just something that I did not expect. Um, I can still do some tuning to this. I think maybe it could potentially be overgassed. So we could look at an adjustable gas block I can look at the the buffer spring and the buffer itself. I'd like to put that A2 stock on it, but I know you're not supposed to mix a rifle length buffer system with a carbine length gas system. You kind of don't put those two together. So I think what I'm going to start first is with the recoil spring and the buffer, see if we can't mitigate some of that felt recoil. So I am happy with this build. I am really happy with the fact that it shoots the cheapest ammo possible. So you can go out there, you can plink all day long with this thing, not break the bank. And it is definitely a head turner. When I pulled this out on the range, everyone just assumed it was your typical 223556 AR until I pulled the trigger and they were like, uh, oh, what was that? So you're definitely gonna get some head turns not only with the physical sound that it makes, but when you put in this weird, crooked magazine, people are gonna know something's up. So I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed this build. Leave your comments below of what you wanna see next. Um, just throw some stuff out there. I'll see what's available in terms of parts and we'll we'll put it together and see how it works. I. I I love getting your guys' feedback on stuff like that. Also, make sure that you stay tuned because as promised, at the end of this build, which we have reached, I will be giving away an 80% lower to one of you. So that video is going to be coming up very, very soon. Stay tuned. So until next time, make sure that you're practicing safe weapons handling at all times and treating every weapon as if it was loaded. God bless America. G2 out.